I shared this story several months ago at our last business meeting, and I was asked if I would share it again for this storytelling time. And I must admit that I expressed my concern about that, and I asked Phil that a number of you who are at that meeting have already heard this story, but he reassured me that in our church and indeed our lives, stories are told and retold again and again. But if you'd rather not listen to it again, feel free to take an eight and a half minute nap and you can awake refreshed to hear Phil's sermon afterwards. This morning I'm gonna tell you a true story that happened and is still happening here at CMC. And I stumbled onto it just a few months ago and I found it rather remarkable on a number of levels and I feel that it was a worthy addition to CMC's garden of stories, if you will, that has sprouted in response to so many different needs. It is, however, partly a cautionary tale. And the caution is this. If you find yourself leaving church some Sunday morning and you walk past the fellowship halls and you see Dave Widmer, just sitting there at the table looking all friendly-like, you might just want to put your head down and keep on walking. I didn't follow that advice. And I made the mistake of stopping to chat a little and the further error of asking him what he'd been doing with his time lately. Dave launched into this story about the work that Madeline and David Maldonado are doing with immigrants who have been coming into our midst, some from very desperate situations, with little more than the clothes on their backs. Many of them, after harrowing experiences of traveling from various Central and South American countries, but eventually finding their way to Elkhart County, where they found people like Madeline and David, these welcoming beacons, if you will, who are willing to help folks literally start over again from scratch. Dave went on to tell me about an ad hoc group of CMCers who looked at what was happening and they realized as this stream of immigrants swelled that the Maldonados were being pulled in many different directions and it had the potential of becoming too much for two people to hold together. So a group of folks got together and they rolled up their sleeves and they got to work supporting this ministry. What was interesting about this to me was that it wasn't a top-down type of response where one identifies a problem, forms a committee, and then builds an organization to help people. Instead, it seemed to me to be an upside-down process, an organic response to need. And it went something like this. What do people need? Well, everything. Clothes? Yes. So the word went out, and clothes started flowing in from people all over. And then it was, where are we going to put all this stuff? I know, someone said. Let's fill up the office. <laughs> and our CMC staff soon came to understand that they were working not out of an office, but out of a clothing distribution center. Since then, thanks in part to our gracious anti-chaos facilitator, Tina Hartman, this operation was moved right up there to the balcony behind the dividers that you see. I don't know about you, but I sort of like knowing when I come to church on Sunday that this clothing distribution center is right here with us in our worship. And then it was, we really need a person to be in charge of this clothing, and up steps Lisa Kasky, who has been so key in getting the support group started in the first place, and she volunteers to be the point person on clothing. So what else do people need? Well, everything. 
pots, pans, silverware, plates, cups, sheets, blankets, coffee makers, toasters, blenders. And when people heard about that, things started flowing in. And Dave and Rose Widmer, who apparently loved to go to sales and auctions, had a new focus for their adventures. And then it was, where are we going to put all this stuff? And Dave and Rose said, well, we've got a big house and a garage to boot. Well, I went down and visited them during this time, and it looked like they were moving boxes all over the place, filled with donated housewares. So guess what? Dave and Rose were more than willing to step in and become the point persons on housewares. So what else? Well, everything, including furniture, beds, mattresses, tables, chairs, dressers, sofas, recliners. And these start coming in from all over. And here's another person, June Yoder, who has her ear to the ground and seems to know who's moving from Green to Greencroft, who's downsizing, and who's moving out this summer. So where's all this stuff going to go? Well, some of that remains to be seen. But guess what? June becomes the point person on furniture. So what else? Well, people need to get to doctor's appointments. They don't always have cars. And up steps Kara Jeeves to be the point person on transportation. And then we need movers. People with trailers and trucks who can get all these things delivered and hoisted upstairs. And so here are Joe Christoffel, Tim Short, and other volunteers like Everett Thomas and Bob Kaufman. So now they have themselves a moving department. And then there's everyone else. Christian Aleman, who jumps in and gets things done while Madeline and David are gone. James and Barb Nelson Gingrich, who have opened up their home to one of the families from Columbia with their newborn baby for several months now until they can find an apartment. Our Mennonite women's group, making blankets and comforters. Generous businesses like Elkhart Bedding, giving large discounts on mattresses. Goshen College donating many dressers and beds, and dozens and dozens of individual don of donors, and it goes on and on. But then this ad hoc group began to realize that people were cross-talking all over the place, back and forth between all these departments, and who's in charge anyway? So someone says, we need ambassadors, people who are the contacts for individual families and who will coordinate all these things and be the ones to meet and greet a family to see what is needed. So people like Alan Peachy and Jane Short became ambassadors. And this was the consequence of my stopping to talk with Dave on that fateful Sunday. For the very next day, the phone rings. Hi, this is Lisa Kasky. Dave tells me that you might be interested in helping out with becoming an ambassador. You know, it's funny, but I don't think I ever said that to him. <laughs> and so I start to protest, but I don't even know Spanish. Oh, that's okay, Lisa said. You'll figure it out. <laughs> Jane Short later reassured me, don't worry, I don't know any Spanish either, but we have an app for that. It's called Say Hi. You might want to look into it, Say Hi. And that seems to be the motto of this group. We'll figure it out as we go along. So I got my chance to try it. And I had the great privilege of connecting with a lovely family from Venezuela and helping to coordinate the filling of their apartment. And it was all very beautiful. And now I count them 
as my friends. So if you want to jump in, there's lots of room, lots of ways to get involved. Contact Lisa, or you can go to our beautifully refurbished CMC website under Featured Events and click on Volunteer Opportunities to connect with CMC Latinos. And if you'd rather not get involved at this point, then you probably shouldn't stop and talk with Dave. So as I've thought about this, I asked myself, what is really happening here? And here's what I feel is happening. We aren't just standing around doing good things. We're not saving people. We're not doing our Christian duty. But rather, I think that we ourselves are being given a chance for redemption. Jesus is walking among us in a very real and in a biblical way, in a Matthew 25 way. Then they will answer him, Lord, when did you see, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? When did we see you a stranger or needing clothes? When did we see you sick? And the king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And so, in my mind, I see these streams of immigrants weaving in and around our lives here in Goshen, and they seem to me to be the arms of God surrounding us, reassuring us that God is indeed here among us. And by reaching out and greeting these strangers, we are being given the opportunity to step out and meet God face to face right here and right now.